everyone, Misha here with another little nature break for you, a nature break video to talk to you a little bit about how you can feel comfortable going out into nature. Now, sometimes people ask me, you know, how do you find these beautiful places to go to? And actually, today we are, it may look like I'm standing in the woods, but I'm not. If you turn around and look over here with me, I'm actually at our Cypress Pillar Healing Arts Center, and this is our parking lot. So you can see over here, it's not super pretty. <laughs> There's a lot of asphalt. If you look this way, this may look like a pond, but it's just a retention pond. In fact, right now, because we're in the summertime, we've been having some algal blooms. It's kind of scuzzy. There's some big floating mats of algae and stuff out there because this water doesn't always filter so great and there is some chemical runoff that goes into it. But I wanted to share with you the idea that you don't have to go out into the woods or out to a mountain or someplace really, really remote to get and be able to connect with nature. And I just wanted to show you a couple of things that I like to do when I come to these sites. So this spot may not look like a lot, but there is quite a bit of really beautiful deep nature to connect with. You saw me, I started over by this tree, which would be a really lovely place to start if you felt like you wanted to connect. Uh, nice shady patch right here. And honestly, a lot of times I'll just hang out and take a couple minutes to just connect with a tree, which by touching it, you can kind of see I'm doing that now. I also am a big fan of just putting my hand against the bark. I kind of can't do this <laughs> because this pine tree has an oak tree growing right next to it, so it's a little bit harder to get up in there. But I am a big fan of just sitting down and leaning my back against a tree. But this space, for me, what really attracted me to this particular spot was the water. So I am going to leave the shade, even though it's a really, really hot floor today, and come down by the water and I'd like you to come with me. So while I'm doing this, I'm looking for different things. In my last video, I talked a little bit about, and you kind of see me glancing down, it's because I'm looking for fire ants because there's quite a few out here. There's actually a mound right here, here, and here. So I'm just being really careful about where I put my feet. But I'm also looking to see if there's anything neat going on at the ground. Again, when we come out into nature, there's a giant airplane landing right now. But when we come out into nature, we don't have to have these like really crazy moments where eagles land in front of us. Even just the things that we might consider kind of little are really precious. I promise you, Scout's Honor, we did not plant this. There's actually a feather right here. And it's a pretty cool one. Now, I don't need to know what bird gave this feather. I can tell you because of where we're at in Florida and the birds that I've seen out here, if there's a pretty good chance that it's a great blue heron feather, but I don't need to know that. Just to have that magical moment of finding this beautiful feather in the wild. Now, it is true that in the United States, there are permits that you need to be able to keep and collect feathers. So keep that in mind while you're out in nature definitely not going to tell you that you can't take a feather but it's always something to keep in mind that many of these birds are protected and as are their feathers but when you find them it is a really neat thing to be able to just have that moment and connect deeply with the animal that left this behind come join me by the water bed. So I'm just, again, kind of scanning really quickly to make sure that there's no ant mounds or really dog poop to sit in. And I'm gonna take a spot right here. And it's really, really hard to see this on the video, but there are about 15 different dragonflies that are skimming by me. So one of the ways that I connect with nature, even in places like this, which is pretty industrial, is just by taking a minute to watch for insects. And a really, the most prettiest pink one just went skimming by. And we also have a couple of, there's some gold ones that are really tiny out there. And a, and a blue one is also, oh, there we go. There's the blue one, right on cue. 
and just taking a moment to just sit here and watch them across the water. You can see I'm actually getting distracted just watching them. Another thing I really like to do is to just be very still and watch the flowers. Again, there's no big giant blooms here around me, but we have all sorts of little tiny blooms, like these little white and yellow ones. Um, I think this is sometimes called sneezeweed. These little frog fruits right here. We've got, this is a, probably a terrible invasive here in Florida. I think it's called Florida snow. But I love to just sit here and take a moment and watch because once you are quiet and you stop moving, all of the insects will come back and you'll find butterflies will show up and even bees. And I know bees can be really scary for some people. That's totally okay. But I like to just sit here and kind of take a moment and be quiet. And looks like three, three pennant dragonflies just, just flew by overhead. But I like to just sit here and take a moment and watch for the insects. And I find that as you do that, you start seeing some really neat things. There's no way you can see this, but on this leaf right here, there is this tiny, like it's probably only about half a centimeter long, tiny little white leaf hopper. And just taking the moment to sit here and watch for all of these little, tiny little creatures, the life that's happening around you is a really magical thing. In fact, I'm watching, I just glanced past my cameraman and one of the bright red dragonflies just landed right only about a foot away from him. So when we bring ourselves into nature and we, we stop for a minute and sit down and just really take a moment to be still, a lot of the creatures will settle back in and they'll come right around us and be comfortable with us. And so I'm not looking for, you know, these things to happen like a bald eagle to land right there or an alligator to come rising up out of the water, but it's the little things that are really precious and can really give us a beautiful moment to connect with nature. And there's one other thing you can do too. I don't know if you can tell, but there's trash here. And you know, one of the best ways that we can help out is by picking up some of the things that others leave behind. This area is pretty clean this morning. We actually come out here and clean it fairly regularly, but there's still some trash. So I do encourage you, if you see any, really help out because picking up this is a bag for looks like gloves white gloves those picking up the trash can really help out keeps it out of the waterways keeps it out of the bellies of different animals keeps it from clogging things up and keeps it from breaking down and harming the environment so that's a really beautiful way that you can connect with with the land as well so like I said, you don't need a magical special place, although it is definitely really cool to find those. You can connect with nature pretty much anywhere. So thank you all for listening. See you next time.